couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle blues lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which we'll continue to explore fingerstyle blues in E. Now, we already covered the basic position, you know, E7, A7, and B7 over here in previous lessons, uh, one of them being five awesome fingerstyle blues riffs you can take and use. And we already dealt with... With uh, turnarounds in the five essential blues turnarounds lesson. So now I want to take you further up the neck um, to include these chords, okay, these uh, shapes you can use, as well as okay, all sorts of uh, seventh chord uh, shapes and positions that you can take and manipulate. We're going to explore the neck together and we're going to find out what we can do because I want you to improvise. So what good is it if I just give you stuff to play? I want you to take um, the knowledge and apply it yourself. So, um, by the way, we also um, tackled uh, Travis picking country style blues in the Lick and Riff intro lesson. So you can check that out as well because uh, I'm probably going to use Travis picking for some examples as well. So um, we already covered this. basic options uh, right on the first three frets. Now we're gonna try to play um, a little higher up the neck and create some really tasty licks using chord shapes. So the first chord shape would be a C7 chord shape, okay, but up here on five to seven. So it's five, seven, six, seven on strengths two, two, five. Okay, so okay, five frets up. Now, this is E7 because C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So you can use the sixth string or the fifth string as your bass note, or you can Travis pick between the two. Okay, now you have a dual note here. Yeah, unison. You have the open E string, which is E, and you have five on the B string, which is also E, so you, we're going to use that to the best effect possible. Now, you can start with... Just exploring the chord with different arpeggios, or, again, a shuffle uh, beat. an arpeggio. Now what I did here was slide the chord in and one fret uh, one fret down and just putting it back in place. So from four to five okay, or from six to seven. So okay now find your favorite expression of this. I don't want to impose any idea. I want you to find your own style so Then you go to A. Now we're gonna go back to this, right? Um, especially with the sharp nine. Okay, why not do it right now? Okay, we have the seven six seven as the chord head, right? Okay, the D seven shape there. So put your fingers as a D seven shape there. Seven six seven on strings three four and five, and your pinky should be on eight on the second string. Now if it's on eight creates that funky, full of tension chord, um, E sharp nine, or E seven sharp nine, because it has both the seven and the sharp nine. So this is a very strong chord, and it's full of tension. And if you add the open E string to it, okay, then by strumming it, it sounds weird, but we're playing finger styles, so you can try different arpeggios. Travis picking. I'll get to shuffle uh, in a second. I want to tell you that you can play the natural ninth. You can play E9. You can play seven on the second string. And then you can do the, the approach note thing. 
the chromatic approach, the chord one step down and back up. Now you can do it with. Okay, but with the sharp nine, it's better to just move this note to eight and seven on the second string. And you have the open E string instead of five, or you can go back to the C7 shapes. So you have options. And you can use the unison there, or you can um, or you can play different licks. Uh, for example, eight on the B string, open E string, seven on the B string, open E string. Okay, and. then go to the seven uh, to the C7 shape and just play around with that. Okay, there are many different combinations, but again, I don't want to impose any idea. I want you to find your own approaches to this. So uh, this is basically a toolbox lesson. Now, with Travis picking, it sounds something like this. Right, something like this. With a shuffle beat, of course, gives it a completely different feel. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, problematic for me to um, shift between the two approaches, so give me a second to regroup. fingers want to move to A7, but I want to give you more examples with E7 before I move on. And you can also bend it a little. Okay. And now you can also use um, notes on the E string, for example, 7 or 5 or 4, okay, because this is the major note. Okay, so you can, um, you can do something like this. And the open second string is inside E anyway, so um, you can use that as well. See? Okay, with the C7 shape, you can pull off uh, from 4 to 0, or okay, 4, 5. trying to find as many ideas for you to use. Okay. Now you can use um, a mixture of minor and major here. Um, you can choose to play eight on the second string because that's an E minor. Okay. And it's also um, part of the uh, pentatonic. Okay. Or you can use nine on the E string to create this sort of shape. Okay? And it's time to move on to A. Okay? If, if you're used to the blues, you know, you, you can feel it already that you want to move to A. So these are a few examples with the C7 shape. Okay, with 5, 7, and 8 on the second string. Now, for A7, we can use this shape, okay, or this shape. Okay, again, it's a D shape, again, on strings 2, 3, and 4, okay, on 5. So it's 5, 6, 5 on strings 2, 3, and 4. Now, why is that? Because if we have A and we take the pinky off, okay, then we have 5 on the 4th string, and this creates this. So we have the open A string, so why put on the entire bar uh, if we can just use this shape? Now, you can bar for it on five. I know I just contradicted myself, but I meant the full bar, okay? While you can use five on uh, strings one, two, three, and four, and just play this. Now, um, it all depends on what you want to achieve. Now, if you want to vibrate the chord, okay, then, it's better to put on the fingers, but right, if 
you want to give uh, sort of an effect, then it's better to put on these fingers. Or, you have to do the same thing, uh, just minus the vibrator. So, um, you can use your pinky for eight and seven on the second string again. So, and then you go back to the E7. So the five on the second string is the connector. So uh, yeah, the connector, okay? just like um, an anime robot, uh, connector. So, okay, so you can move it around. Now you can play, um, again, Travis Becking. to A and use the chromatic approach again um, and you can use the open E string and you can do this right with without without barring the E string and just barring or changing a position when you need five on the B string so and you could get the the finger style feel, the finger style sound. And then go back to um, to C7 shape, okay? Or back to the basic E7 shape, okay? You can make a transition. We're focusing on this part of the neck, five to seven, but you can always go back to the basic chords. Of course, um, and instead of five on the second string, you can play the open E string, and that gives you time to put your fingers back in place. So, for example, let me try to uh, switch from teacher mode to player mode and give you a full example. Okay, so. this. Okay, I'm giving you a simple example on purpose. I don't want to overcomplicate it. I want you to find your own method of, um, of playing the finger style blues. Again, this is a toolbox lesson. So, B7. Okay, B7 is always the problematic chord here. And why is it problematic? Because you either play this, okay, which is fine, or you have to bar. Okay? Now, if you bar, then you can use your pinky. Okay, again, on um, seven, nine, and 10. Okay, it's exactly the same as, okay, as five, seven, and eight, just two frets up. Okay, so just, again, find ways to express yourself. Okay, and then you move back to A. So that's the turnaround. And you can also use chromatics, right? B7, B flat seven, A7, so. Right? And you can also use, okay, you can use nine on the third string, so. And then just move down chromatically, so. Right? Without chromatics. chromatics and again don't overuse the chromatic approach because otherwise it would sound too chromatic but this is music so everything is relative so you can ignore that and use as many chromatics as you want and call it a motif okay that's why I say that I don't want to impose anything because you're gonna make your own choices now I mentioned the seventh chord um, the seventh chord approach and Right now, we, um, we talked about licks. And the seventh chord approach is to take any seventh shape and play around with that. And you can connect them using turnarounds. For example, right, a D7 shape on four, right? four, three, uh, yeah, four, three, four on springs one, two, and three is E7 because D7, D sharp seven, E7. Now, you can use that. 
then you can open the E string because it's in the chord. Right? And you can do a chromatic move with four, five, six, seven on strings one and three to connect to E7 on seven. Okay, A shape minus the third uh, string finger. So it's seven on the third string. So. so you can play something like this. And go back down. Okay, you can play around with the rhythm. Okay, you can uh, play around with the turnaround itself. Okay, you can make it chaotic. And use chromatics, you can go crazy. And of course you can use this shape. Right? But if you're using this shape, it's better to use the ninth shape and bar strings one, two, and three on seven. Okay? And then you have six and seven on strings four and five. I'll explain why in a second. Okay? Because you can use 9 and 10 on the E string that way. And if you want an easier version, just ignore the D string, okay, that's important, and just bar the 7th fret and leave the 6th string open. Okay, and then A7, or you can bar, by the way. Okay, I'm not barring you from barring, so... You can use the bar if you like. I'm just giving you more options because the bar is the most obvious one. So, um... And then either a bar. supposed to move to B7 but um, I want to keep it going because again B7 is problematic so B7 is the um, the least creative chord here because again you're very very um, very confined to what you can do you can also do this like the, the B7 here the A shape okay and on two um, and then again, go chromatically down, but this bar gives you basically the same, uh, the same options, okay, the same options, okay? uh, nine, uh, 10, 9, and 7 on the second string is the same as 5, 4, 2 on the, uh, the E string, so why confine yourself when you can add a higher string and add, okay, and add that major sound? Or the minor sound with uh, eight on the E string. Okay, now this is a little bit too much, okay, because it takes you out of the blues uh, frame of mind. But you can still do it. Again, toolbox. Now there's another seventh chord that you can use, which is this. It's the open sixth string, so you don't need to do this. Okay, on twelve, you have ten. 12 and 11 on strings 1, 2, and 3. Okay, this is another 7th chord shape. And you can use it on... on 3 as well for A, for A7. It's 3, 5, and 6. And you can use that as well. You can pull off... Okay, so... Ah. Okay, and then gives you an option. And this. And you can play around with 10 and 9. And the open E string serves as a nice addition. Even the open B string. Okay, 
this is a little bit too much in my opinion but you can make it work with enough uh, enough experimentation uh, I don't want to waste your time I want to give you more ideas so this is inside the um, um, pentatonic uh, box of the fifth and fourth position Okay, with 12, 10, 12, 10 on strings one and two, and then eight on the B string and nine on the third string. And this can be a really nice transition. Okay, you start with the chord. Okay, oh, what? And then create a any sort of lick you want. And nine on the third string is inside the a7 shape on 9. Okay? Remember the D7 shape on 4, which is E. Now on 9, it's A. Okay, so you have another option. And you can use 10 as well on the second string. Okay? To use as licks from 8 to 10. And okay, so. And then. If you want to do a turnaround sort of thing, it ends on five and six, okay, and springs one and three because again, look at the bar. Okay, you have the A major note here. It's not minor. It's not five and five. So it's not or six. Okay, because that's off. Um, if you want, you can do okay nine, ten, eleven, twelve because that leads you into the octave of this, okay? The open first and third string, which are in A7. So, okay? And just uh, use it um, as a basis for a lick or as a connector again, but this time a little bit of an exaggeration. And then go back down to four, back down to E. Now, it doesn't work as an example, but in the right context, it can be a really awesome leg. See? It's a little bit unexpected because you're soloing. And if you're soloing okay, on A, okay, in the pentatonic box, okay, so. Okay, you might be... Okay, and you can use that as a surprise ending. And, ah, missed uh, Fred there. Okay, see? It's a really nice, uh, it's a really nice lick in context. And... Okay, you can use chords as licks. And then, um, okay, now I, I use this, okay, the second and third strings to lead me back chromatically to five on the second string, okay, to lead me back to E. So, Uh, it wasn't a very good lick, um, but again, it was a basis for an example. So, um, this is fingerstyle blues in E. Now, I'll try to give you an example, but before I do, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I have no idea why you haven't already. There's a ton of free lessons over here. Everything is for free, even though you can uh, choose to become a patron, uh, a Patreon patron, and help uh, support and um, help me make more lessons. I'd be grateful for any pledge, and I thank you in advance for it. Now let me try to play a little bit of the blues and um, switch on the creative side of the brain instead of the analytical one. So. Um... <laughs>
still not feeling it, still feeling the camera. But as you can see, I'm trying different positions and I'm trying to break my own habits as I go along. For example, I started with complete chromatics. Okay? Which also reminds me, if you've uh, stayed with me so far, uh, that you can do a 2-5 move back to E at the end there. You can do okay, F sharp 7 and then okay, uh, B flat 13 or B jazz augmented or 7 augmented or sharp 5, however you want to call it. So you take the C7 shape two frets up okay, to F sharp 7 okay, and then instead of B7 you can either do Okay, the same thing with 9 on the 2nd string, or you can do 8 on the 2nd string. Okay, B7 with 8 on the 2nd string. So, it's 8, 8, 7 on strings 2, 3, and 4, with 7 on the 6th string. Okay, and that creates... Okay, a 2, 5, 1 move. Okay, it's the 2 of the scale to the 5 of the scale to the 1 of the scale. So... And again, you can toy around with that as well. And you can go back to B7 then, so... And go back... Not used to this shape anymore. I've been around here all the time, so... And you can also move chromatically or just the bass note. takes you back to the basic position or and then go back to and connect it using another leg so and then you go right back to the beginning and that's what the blues is all about exploration and improvisation so thank you very much for watching I'll see you soon in another lesson Go improvise. Have fun. Bye for now.